we're gonna talk about Comey Can't Communicate. This is a very hard show to, like, talk about because it's... It's what I like. Comedy's pretty cool. Uh, and I do like the characters. And we have... You have covered this one in one of our last seasonal wrap-ups, yeah. too. Uh, Comey's great. Um, and it, it's a... Uh, adaptation of, I believe, a four coma manga. I think it was just a normal manga. Just but a normal I'm manga. not totally sure. Oh, I, bet. I thought it. I, I might be getting it mixed up with something else. I, I've read but... it, so like the thing is, when they translate that stuff to volumes, sometimes it looks different. So it might literally be that, and I just don't realize yeah. it. I remember <laughs> seeing it online when I first checked it out. Like I think someone like linked it in Facebook or something, and I was like, this seems neat. And then it, when it finally got aired. Uh, I was pretty excited because I had heard so much about it. And it is really good. It, it's definitely an internet yeah. sensation as far as yeah. memes go, that's for sure. <laughs> I, I would consider it to really lean in on the slice of life aspect, because while there is some levels of character growth, uh, I do feel like it's more slice of life where, like, if you miss an episode, it's not the end of the world. Like, you might miss out on a development or two, but right. it's not like... It's not like Spy Family or Kaguya, where if you miss an episode, you're going to be like, I have no idea what happened. Like, what am I missing? Even from what I hear people say about the manga, it's a very slow-moving manga. Yeah. So, even would, if there's developments, it'll be so far down the line that, like, it'd would, be weird if you missed something. Yeah. <laughs> I would also say it's greatest and worst factor is that there are some tropes here and they are not just oh, no they are not just oh hey i can identify this trope it is oh my gosh this trope is in my face some characters are so like like it is the most exaggerated use of tropes i've seen and it's not always a bad thing because sometimes they're so exaggerated that it's like funny uh, and, and it makes it so that you don't it, it doesn't take a long time to get to know how these characters are but they're so leaning in heavy on their tropes that sometimes it's like, oh my god, this character should not be here. Their trope is <laughs> dragging the experience down right now. They Is the main cast largely good, though? The main cast is largely good if you can get behind the trope that is being used for I, them. I know four characters. Yeah. No, I know three characters I would say from the Comey. best part about the show <laughs> is that the main three are very strongly... Uh, linked in how the writing is. Um, is the main three is Komi, the main the main guy, and Najimi, right? Yes. Okay, thank God. Yeah, so the main three are Komi, Tadano, and Hajime. Um, Tadano is a little milk toast, but honestly, it works because he's just a normal dude being a dude. Um, you know, he, he he obviously harbors feelings for Komi, and Komi can't communicate. Haha, <laughs> funny name. Uh, but you know she can, she can communicate just enough where she's able to at least convey her feelings albeit a little awkwardly that she does want to make connections you know we, we, we've seen all this in season one but like I, I basically made the point last time we did one when you watched the first season that I like the idea of this series but I read one volume of it and I was like I get it I'm done that's about that's about <laughs> accurate you it, it makes for a good and bad moment where you can literally pick it up at any point and you can put it down at any point there's not like anything driving the narrative other than maybe like some curious questions like will he get with it is the me? it is the will he will they want they? yeah ah. um i will say in season two there were some characters that i don't even uh, i i'm awful at remembering i think this character was introduced in season one but uh, if they were uh, completely off my radar you've already said before that this was kind of the forgettable one for you anyways which yeah. is but um, there was a there was a character that uh, I ended up really liking. Let's see if can... In a sea of slice of life anime, this is kind of the the slice of life, at least for this season. Ah, oh, Katai, Katai. Yeah. So in season two, there's this character named Katai, who's like design uh, and way he acts is literally designed to be like the gangster guy, like. Here's a picture of him just being, like, nonchalant. But here's a picture of how they animate him, because he has basically the same issue Comey does, except, like, by being a dude with more masculine traits. Him being shy looks, like, way more menacing. So, like, yeah, like that. Yeah. So, like, uh, a lot of people start thinking, like, he's, like, a delinquent or, like, a gangster. But literally, he's just Comey, too. Uh, he's a male character that is so shy he can't convey his feelings and he just wants friends and he just wants to, to help people and be nice but everyone sees him and are like oh my in, in the same way they look at Comey and Revere as like this like ice queen of 
being super mega popular, they look at this guy and they're like, oh my gosh, this guy, he's gonna tear me apart. <laughs> but like, they're, they're kind of the same, but I, I actually like, I think I like the dude more. Just because, oh no! Yeah. <laughs> like, 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 Comey's adorable, but I, I think it's just like the sheer factor if I liked Comey to begin with. This guy I didn't like at first, because I'm like, oh, it's just Comey too, but like, there's something like, I, I, I feel like it's because he's kind of like a himbo and the, the himbo trope does kind of get me where it's like, this guy is so dumb, he's adorable. <laughs> uh, and then the other character I started to like more was the ninja character. Uh, and I think that's just because, um, well, I like ninjas, so <laughs> it's kind of... Fair enough. It, it literally Valid. just goes to back to the point where if you like tropes, you're just going to end up liking characters for the tropes. That's fair, um, that's fair. But like... There's a scene where, like, the, the the ninja's part of the, like, group of boys that are always talking about what girls they like, but there was the scene where, like, him and Tadano, like, drew popsicle sticks where they were playing, like, one of those, like, daring date games, and Komi's mother was like, the one with number four has to kiss number nine, so it was the ninja dude had to get a kiss from Tadano, and when he blushed, Tadano was like, what the fuck are you doing? And it was just, I, I, I don't know why that, but that just stuck out of my head, It's like, <laughs> the ninja dude being all, like, like, oh, I'm so embarrassed. It's like, you're, you're a ninja. What are you doing? You can't let this embarrass you, I guess. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, if you liked season one, you probably already watched season two if you haven't already checked it out. I, I would give it a light recommendation. Watch a couple episodes to see if it's for you, but it's not like a must-see. You can pick it up or you can leave it. But it's not bad. I do really like it, and I, I know people that this show is very much for them. I would say people that are very into slice-of-life comedies absolutely for you if you're looking for a character driven narrative or you don't like heavy tropes then it's one you would want to stay away from gotcha